Welcome back to my channel. So today let's answer question number one A. So provide the structure of the major or chronic products. Major products. So that is S here. Which result in the reaction below. So firstly we need to know and determine what type of mechanism is given here whether it is SN1 or E1 or it is SN2 or E2 okay let's look at the the given reactants so this is our um, alkyl halide it is a, a trans compound consists of up carbon and then down so um, this carbon is a, an alpha carbon the one which um, which attach to the halogen which is chlorine in this case and then look at the surrounding carbon here which is the beta carbon a beta carbon so this is beta 1 and this is beta 2 So there are two surroundings, uh, surroundings or neighboring carbon. Therefore, this is a secondary, secondary alkyl halide. And look at um, another reactants or starting materials. This is CH three CH two OH. So it is ethanol. which is a uh, weak nucleophile and also a weak base another thing is to take the consideration here is the presence of the heat higher temperature and then before we look at the answer, let's look at the explanation how <coughs> how we can predict the mechanism whether it is SN1 or SN2. So there are four factors that um, we can take consider when we are predicting whether it is SN1 or SN2 mechanism firstly the alkyl halide use so the uh, tertiary alkyl halide will promote will usually undergo SN1 sorry and then for methyl halide and primary and also and also primary halide is will undergo SN2 <coughs> but for secondary alkyl halide must look at the nucleophile given and add the factors the next factor is the nucleophile use if it use a strong nucleophile then it will favor SN2 mechanism is if it is used a weak nucleophile so then it is SN1 reaction the living groups also affect the uh, reaction so if it use a better 
or good living groups, then it is as an to mechanism. While when it uses a poor living group, then it is as an one mechanism. So, for example, a good living group is uh, is the weakest base group living group. Weakest base. Example is iodine, and then a poor, poor living group is the strongest base, has the smallest size, which is chlorine. This is iodine, and then this is fluorine. And then the solvent also, uh, we need to consider when the solvent used is a protic, uh, a protic solvent, then it is SN1 mechanism. But when it uses a polar, a protic solvent, so it is SN2 mechanism. A polar protic solvent, polar protic solvent SN1, and polar. A protic solvent is S SN2. A protic here means that it is incapable of forming hydrogen bonding. Not able to form hydrogen bond. Okay, so this is how we can the no this are four factors which really need to take consider when you are determining whether it is N1 or SN2 mechanism. So let's look at the factors or the things that we must to consider before we can decide it is a 1 or it is a 2 for elimination reaction. So for elimination E1 Mm, it is a two-step reaction, and then for E2, it is a concerted reaction, which is a single-step reaction. This is concerted reaction. Mm. And then for E1 <coughs> and E2, mm, okay. For elimination reaction, it use base. It doesn't use nucleophile. E1 use a <coughs> use a weak base while E2 uses strong base and then for E1 also it use a good ionizing solvent ionizing solvent here means that it uses a polar protic solvent and then the rate is depends only uh, by the concentration of the alkyl halide <coughs> but for the interaction it, the rate depends on both the concentration of halide and also the concentration of the base given <coughs> both are ZSF products and then for the E2, it is using the preferred geometry, which is anti periplana And for E1, the products must be rearranged. If, if mix. If needs, rearrangement may occur. So there are two types of rearrangement. This is one two hydride shift when you shifting a hydrogen atom, and then the other type is one two alkyl shift, usually methyl shift, because we cannot shift a larger or a bigger groups. And then 
that would be our explanation ah. how we can consider the E1 or E2 mechanism Okay. Mm. So now let's look at the substitution or elimination. The only thing I want to highlight, highlight here is the mm, high temperature. The presence of the heat will favors elimination reaction okay so that's all the other things you can read by your own here i'm going to delete this nice okay so let's look at the answers okay okay before that so we know this type of reaction is elimination because given here is the the high temperature or the presence of the heat this is not this is a kind of uh, delta temperature mm. So, favor elimination. But we don't know whether it is E1 or E2 because it's using a secondary alkyl halide. Secondary alkyl halide. Secondary halide can be tricky to determine whether it is E1 or E2. But look at another reactor or look at the base used for the elimination it used base it doesn't use nucleophile so in this case it's a, it's using a weak base referring to the notes I just shared with you so weak base therefore it is E1 easy right it's very simple so we know this type of the type of reaction given is E1. Have two step. Two step. Okay, look at the answers. Step one is um, what happened in the step one? Okay, so this is alpha carbon, the one attached to the halogen, and then this is a beta carbon. This is another beta carbon, which is the neighboring carbon for the alpha carbon. Okay, in the first step, the homolysis of the CX bond. In this case, the CX CX bond is referring to the C CL bond because our halogen is chlorine in this case. Therefore, the bones here will be broken, and we are using a fully headed arrow, fully headed arrow, which means all the bondings gets by our halogen. It will, it will come out as the leaving group, out as leaving group, Cl minus fluoride ions, leaving groups plus with and then the mm, in the step one there is a formation of carbocation sorry
so it will form carbocation ion here I use another color this positive charge means that the carbon here doesn't have enough bonds it only have one two and then three bondings type of carbocation ion here is secondary carbocation ion and then we need to look whether look and whether rearrangement can occur or not to get a more stable carbocation ion which is a tertiary carbocation ion here only contains one, two, three, three bonding with carbon and one bonding with hydrogenous. So we cannot shift any groups of atoms or atoms itself to get a more stable carbocation. So we, we just use our secondary carbocation. Hmm. in our second step okay in the second step is um, it's known as the formation of the new pi bond or formation of alkene alkene ene but the name for step 2 i will um, I will write here as the base attack. Base attack carbocation. Okay. And then in the step one, just now, um, homolysis. Um, see the breaking the breaking of CX bond or simply you can also Label set one as the formation of carbocation ion. Carbocation ion. Okay. And then in, se in second step, our secondary carbocation ion um, at the beta one or carbon beta 1 at carbon beta 1 which is here this carbon there is two hydrogen but we write one hydrogen just to show the mechanism what happened okay so this is our base ethanol and alcohol a weak base so at the oxygen at the oxygen atom there are two long pairs and one of the long pairs will be used to to form the bonding with uh, hydrogen atoms so before this long pairs can be used to from the hydrogen with this proton the one that we show we expand the structure um, the bond between carbon and hydrogen which is CH bond is cleaved okay means that this bonding between this carbon and hydrogen is broken 
this one will sleep and it will go from here to here making a new pipe bond and then this long pair will okay. Okay, this long pair will attack. We're trying to form a bond with hydrogen atom with a beta hydrogen, a beta hydrogen from our beta carbon. So this is a beta proton or beta hydrogen. So you guys can see now why this is called elimination reaction because it is using a weak base and then our base is this is a base is attacking our carbocation and removes a proton from our carbocation hence the bonding here is cleaved and forming a new pi bond here and that's all very simple in step two. Okay. All using fully headed arrow and then forming our very first product. And then another possible product which is at the at carbon beta 2 so this is carbon beta 2 okay this is beta 2 carbon and then this is a beta 2 protons or beta 2 hydrogens um, the same thing happened one of the long pairs will be used to form the bonds between with the beta hydrogen, second beta hydrogen, this hydrogen atom, and then the bond between C and H will be cleaved. So forming a double bond here. Okay, like that. Now forming our second product. The one that I highlighted is a carbon carbon double bond C double bond C, which is the functional groups for um for alkene carbon carbon double bond, and then the byproducts will become CH three CH two O. H2 plus the positive is on an oxygen atom because when you calculate the former charge of oxygen atom you will get positive one but do not um, focus on the byproduct or side product only look at the major product so your answer, your answer will be this one or this one only so these two are our major products this is s means that it have more than one major product so these are two major products and that's all i hope i answering these questions very well thank you for watching and goodbye